Hello, David Harper of the Bionic Turtle with a brief tutorial on how to estimate volatility with the exponentially weighted moving average. So to explain this approach, I'm going to use the same data that I used to calculate simple volatility, and that was a historical series of exchange rates between the euro and the dollar, such that on February 6th, the one euro purchased approximately one dollar and forty four cents in US dollars. I have a series of about thirty exchange rates going back in time. I've collapsed many of the rows in between. You can see here I expand briefly just to show you. So I collapse the values in the middle so they don't get in the way. But what we have here in this row are exchange rates going back in time then in green, we calculated the periodic returns. That formula is shown here in green. It's the natural log of an exchange rate divided by the rate on the day before. Okay, so given periodic returns then, in purple, we squared the returns such that we are able, with the squared returns, to calculate what I called simple volatility by simply averaging the squared returns. So this in purple are the returns squared. You can see that's the formula. It's just the periodic return squared. And then we have a series of squared returns. If I were to take the average of those squared returns, I would be implementing this formula here and I would calculate the simple variance of that series. Now I would take the square root of that to get the volatility because volatility is the standard deviation and the, that standard deviation is the square root of the variance but you can see this formula here is simply it's the sum of the squared returns divided by the number of observations in the series so it's just the average of this series of squared returns. Okay that was the simple volatility or variance what is the exponentially weighted moving average? Well, it's similar. We're still going to use these squared returns that are, that are a historical series, but unlike this simple approach, which takes an average and therefore gives each squared return the same weight, we're going to weight the more recent squared returns. We're going to give them a higher weight so for example you can see here I've got a weight of six percent for the last squared return or for the most recent that would be February 5th and if we go all the way back to the end of the series January 5th it has a weight of only one percent so the key difference is instead of giving all of the squared returns equal weight under the exponentially weighted moving average we're gonna weight them and furthermore, we're going to weight them in a declining or exponentially declining fashion such that the key parameter is lambda. I'm going to use 94% because that's approximately the uh, weight used by risk metrics. And if I go down here to the first weight, you'll see it is 1 minus lambda. Lambda is 94%. 1 minus 94% is 6%. So I'm going to assign, I'm going to weight the most recent periodic return was 6%. Then I'm going to come down to the day before that, February 4th in this example, and I'm going to give it a weight of 6% multiplied by lambda, or 6% multiplied by 94%, and we get 5.6%. So the, the exponential, or the word exponential in there means that each weight is 94% of the weight on the day after. So these weights are proportional and the proportion is given by lambda. Such that if we go to this column here, all I do is multiply the squared return times the weight. And the same for the day before. Such that these weights in exponentially declining fashion will eventually sum to one. So if I sum this whole series, you can see right here, in this case I get 0 0.00310 percent well that is the calculation for the variance under the exponentially weighted moving average approach 
And so if you can see this picture here, just to remind, again, to say this another way, those weights that I use here, that I multiply by the squared returns, they are declining in exponentially function. So the most recent weight here, the first weight, the, the, the yesterday's weight, so to speak, is 1 minus lambda. The day before is 1 minus lambda multiplied by lambda the first power, or 1 minus lambda multiplied by lambda. The day before that is 1 minus lambda multiplied by lambda squared, and so on, lambda cubed, lambda four, lambda the fourth power. So that as we go back in time, each weight is mul a multiple of lambda on the day after. Now the a really elegant thing about this exponentially weighted moving average, which, which is really quite elegant, is that it all reduces. We don't have to go out and calculate the long series. So this is really something. And I'm going to pull that formula in here in purple, put it right there. Believe it or not, and the math really isn't too hard, that infinite series of weights that are declining exponentially reduces to what is here a recursive formula such that we can say, I'll move down a little bit, the variance on day n is a function of lambda multiplied by the variance on the day before plus 1 minus lambda multiplied by the squared return on the day before. So it's recursive because today's lambda is a function of yesterday's lambda. And in this recursion, we very elegantly get to incorporate the entire infinite series that preceded. And so this exponentially weighted moving average then does get, it is a conditional variance that gets updated with new information, that new information reflected largely in the squared return. But it is solely a function then of the previous days or lagged variance and the previous days or lagged squared return. And you'll notice the weights are very simple. We have a lambda and a 1 minus lambda guaranteeing that the sum of the weights is 1. Now let me just prove it by going up here into pink and I'll delete the formula. And now all I'm going to do is put in the formula that's here in this pink box. Okay, so I'm going to start with equals lambda multiplied by the variance on the day before. So that's not the one in yellow, that's the variance on the day before. And then I'm going to add 1 minus lambda multiplied by the squared return on the day before, which is this cell right here. So that's the formula that implements this. It reaches back not to today's estimate of variance, but to the previous day's estimate of variance. So that's February 5th in this case. And let me hit enter and notice it equals the same as this variance, which is the a sum of this almost infinite series. I didn't go all the way back. And so the recursive formula, that's the really elegant feature of the exponentially weighted moving average. Hopefully you can see now how it gets its name. It's still a moving average like that simple return, but it it is a little more realistic in the sense that recent variances or squared returns really are getting greater weight. So I hope that's helpful. This is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle. Thank you for your time.